last week on The Outsiders TV. Nate and Christian traveled nearly 4,000 miles from their homes in Oklahoma to Central Alaska's Stony River Lodge. Today we're hoping for better conditions. The elements are really taking a toll on us. Held back by weather conditions, it took Christian and guide David Hensel several days to find a mature Alaskan bull moose. Blessing. So I want to thank the Lord and Savior. This, this, is, this has been my dream for 26 years. I mean, ever since I was born, it's come true. They're the in crowd. We're the other ones. It's a different kind of cloth that we're cut from. We let our colors show where the numbers ain't. We're the paint where there ain't supposed to be paint. That's who we are. It's now Nate's turn to begin his hunt in the beautiful, yet harsh, Alaskan tundra. With miles of land still to trek and only a few days to hunt, Nate's first day of hunting yields a new challenge. We are now farther into the middle of nowhere, into some big country. Not a half mile from the camp, the guys spot a group of caribou bedded along a hill. With weather rolling in, and after some consideration, a decision is made to attempt to stalk. So, we've got them about 250 yards, and uh, I think we're gonna make a stalk. What's, what are we thinking here? Well, the one that we want right now is behind the trees, so we're trying to keep him covered up, and the one that we don't want is on the uphill side. So if for some reason he gets busted, he may be able to trot off on his own. The other ones might not pay attention to him. Give us another chance to swap over to the rifle and get a shot with the rifle if we can't close the distance. So we'll just keep the one that we want kind of hidden and uh, move only when that other one looks like he's feeding or he's asleep. Game on. As the hunters close within 100 yards, the bulls stand up. With the shooter in the back, Nate readies himself for the shot opportunity. We snuck into 90 yards, had a clear open shot, turned around and I get this signal from Christian on the camera because our lens fogged up. Made a good stock, could have probably had a kill if the camera hadn't fogged, but I guess that's what what happens. Uh, part of hunting on on film. That's one of the makes it even harder. So got a lot of, a lot of more animals we can go stock after and hopefully we can get back on that big bull again. He is a monster. Suckers are right there. 
so close. We are about to hike up another mountain. Uh, it has been, uh, weather yesterday was awful, and now we're, we had a nice clean morning. So we have a, an area where we, we feel like we might have big moose or caribou or something over here. So we gotta head up a hill and it is not easy. We are literally walking up a mountain that is like a sponge. It's really pretty, but really tough. So should be a good adventure. We'll see a lot of stuff when we get to the top of the mountain. because it is a massive storm that just came in on us and they say in Alaska just wait a few minutes and the weather's gonna change and it did it went from an okay day to a really bad day it is got ugly fast and so we have lost another half day of hunting to extreme weather so it's that last morning of the hunt and the thoughts of not tagging out are beginning to set in Nate can't help but wonder if he's missed his opportunity. The weather finally broke, and uh, I guess it's day six now. We've been out here so long, and the weather's been so boggy, it's kind of gets confusing on where we're at and what day. But we uh, been glassing up into a bowl up here. I feel like there's a good chance there's a big bull in there. When all of a sudden, his luck changes. He finally spots a mature moose. I like how I like how he's got spikes coming off those paddles. There's nothing like seeing a bull moose in the wild. That is unbelievable. He's probably about 65 inches. We've now got a game plan. We're going to keep the wind in our favor. Work up, try to peek over this draw and see if we can get down in there. And these these bushes from a distance they look real short, so it's really deceiving. But as you get up there. They can be 10 foot tall and thick. Uh, all the guides around here call it Congo, and it looks like Congo when you're in there. It, does, it looks beautiful from here, but not beautiful when we're over there. I'm ready to make a stock on this beautiful animal. We're gonna get this thing done. Across from base camp, the guy spot another legal bull. Using the calm east wind, they devise a strategy to trek straight across the tundra and up a long ravine. We're getting inside the critical distance. That bull can't be more than 100 to 150 yards. And it is dead calm and silent out here. It's so quiet. We're even going to drop our shoes. Our feet are probably going to get really wet. covered Congo bottoms provided enough cover for the men to get within 100 yards of the moose. With only antlers visible, Nate begins to ease up to higher ground in hopes to better see into the dense vegetation. The guys are seconds away from being able to see the moose when all of a the sudden, the hidden bull steps out.
sorry for breathing hard. I've been running and I just tipped over a freaking monster. I have finally knocked down the Alaskan bull moose. The old CVA tipped it over. We are out here probably, we're 300 miles west of Anchorage. It took us three um, bush planes to get us out here. And we're in the middle of God's great country. And he has blessed us today with this monster bull. And uh, we couldn't be any more grateful. Like thank God, seven really, really tough days been weathered out just about every day and we finally got a clear day and we spotted this big sucker from a long ways away. The LCVA tipped it over. So it is uh, just unbelievable. I feel so blessed right now. and I'm so excited to, to get this sucker cleaned up and have a little moose steak tonight. Those are some big old back straps. After harvesting two bull moose, Nate and Christian now begin the process of getting back to civilization. The bush plains land within feet of their tents. Both the meat and gear are loaded up for one of the many several trips to and from camp. out leaves hope that there will be bigger dreams in the future as they fly over another true Alaskan giant. Meanwhile, over in New Mexico, outsiders Mike and Lauren are after a different big game species, elk. Nestled in the high desert terrain of western New Mexico, Black Mountain Outfitters has plenty of elk to go around. Mike and Lauren hope to find a rutting bull within range of their archery equipment so they too can fulfill a lifelong dream of connecting with one of North America's largest big game animals. Well, we got to elk camp and we have to wash all of our scent lock gear from our Arizona hunt last week. Um, gearing up for this elk hunt, so we gotta get everything nice and ready for it. So, this is the main lodge at uh, Black Mountain Hunt that's a good elk. Oh, look at the rams. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? Look right there. Well, we just got set up here at uh, Black Mountain Outfitters and they have a nice little archery range right here set up. It goes from I think 30 all the way up to 100 yards with the target. So, we're gonna do a little practicing, make sure our bows are on, and, and get ready for our hunt to start tomorrow. It's our first day in the woods here. Um, it just started raining really bad, so we uh, had to wait the rain out, but now it's clear and we're ready to chase some elk. With weather slowing down the first day of the hunt, Lauren hopes day two brings better luck. I came across some old pieces of pottery out here. It's pretty cool. You can find them. There's all kinds of uh, little sites out here where you can just pick up old pieces like that. The stunning New Mexico countryside holds more than just bugling elk. It also boasts a healthy mule deer population. Hidden among the shadows, they watch a great 
velvet-covered mule deer buck search for a place to bed down for the day. That's a rattlesnake holy cow. We almost just, he almost just stepped on it. Oh, that was scary. I'm gonna be snake hunting the rest of the day. So we're hunting um, a piece of property that's private and this is the landowner's house. It's a 22,000 acre ranch and this place is absolutely ridiculous. You gotta see the view from their backyard. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, how cute is this? I could just live out here and be happy as a clam. We just rolled back three, three deer. They were right here and they were looking at me and I was looking at them. And then eventually, day here in New Mexico we have put so many miles in um, we've actually got on some small mule deer earlier and, and got to talk to the landowner and she told us a couple of spots where there was some elk so we actually went to one of those spots this afternoon and we got on a small elk um, small bull and tomorrow morning we're gonna go check the second spot and see if we have any luck there so hopefully we'll get a good mature New Mexico bull in our sights tomorrow morning. We'll see. Without knowing the exact location, Lauren and guide Robbie must devise a plan quickly in order to get within range of the large 5x5. Five five. Upwind of the bull, the group begins to make a large circle, attempting to cut him off before he gets to the higher ground and beds for the day. Once in front of the bull's path, they use their cow call to help lure in the running bull. Finally, after three days of hunting, Lauren finally has the mature bull within bow range. It all comes down to this shot. 
the opportunity she's been waiting on her entire life.